and moldy. Suddenly, following my mom to Iran didn't seem like such a bad idea anymore. But then, in the middle of the night while I was sleeping, the basement window burst. Glass fell on me, and I saw a waterfall of mud coming through. It was so strong that by the time I realized what was going on, the floor was already covered in mud, and I couldn't find the key to the basement door anymore. I searched for it for a minute, but without success. Then I changed strategies, ran up the stairs, and hammered against the locked door for several minutes. Hopeless. I went downstairs again and watched the water grow higher. The window was too small to escape. I wouldn't sit through. I was about to drown. I sat down on the stairs and thought about how badly I'd like to see my mom again. Just one last time before I died. To tell her I loved her and to apologize for what I said about her in court. I cried as the water slowly lifted me up. I imagined the pain I'd suffer the last few seconds of my life when muddy water would fill up my lungs. But the water stopped when it reached the height of the window. I had less than two inches of air left and wondered how long this little amount of oxygen would keep me alive or if I'd die first of exhaustion anyway. I tried to float and use as little energy as possible, but it wasn't easy. That's when a plastic bottle hit my head. One of my pee bottles and it floated. I quickly put it under my shirt behind my back so it could help me float. And then I remembered the crack in the ceiling. I floated over there and started sucking air through. Suddenly, all my hopes were up again. This way, I had a chance to survive. I thought floods normally didn't last that long, but I was wrong. It took four days before the water ebbed away again. Four days without sleep or water. And even then, the water only dropped to the height of the window. There, I put my head down and fell asleep. I woke up to screams. Another one! Over here! I lifted my head up and a firefighter shook in fear. Oh, she's alive! Come hurry! They got me out of that basement, gave me water and blankets. But by then, I hadn't drunk water in four days and was so severely dehydrated that my kidneys suffered permanent injury. I might even require a kidney transplant one day. Anyway, when Dad found me in the hospital bed, he wasn't happy to see me. He asked the nurse to leave the room, and then he told me, So you were hiding in my basement. I lacked the strength to kill them off, but maybe that was better. Because he continued, I broke up with Darcy, so once you're healthier, you can come back home. But under the condition that you will renovate the house and repair the damages caused by the flood. It's been severely damaged. He looked at me one last time before he walked out again. What a freaking psycho. And isn't he a cutie pie? Bonnie had no shirt on while TJ was sleeping in her arms with lipstick kisses all over his face. I went to find a hammer so I could finally destroy the handcuffs. But that's when Bonnie said, Oh, I just remembered where the key is. It's right here in my pants. I grabbed the key, sprung them loose, and asked, What was that video on Bonnie's Instagram? Oh, that wasn't my fault. She kissed me while I was asleep. Oh, TJ, you liar. Why don't you tell her about the other things we did last night, you naughty boy? That night, all the guys went to the lake. Us girls weren't invited, but of course Bonnie disappeared with them. So I grabbed a flashlight and went home. I found the guys laughing around a bonfire when Bonnie sat down on CJ's lap and sucked his face. I was disgusted, but the guys were cheering her on. So I threw a stone at them and screamed, Get your dirty hands off him! But TJ stood up for Bonnie and said, You could have hurt someone with that stone. And relax, we were only playing a kissing game. Yeah, don't be such a prude. I'm prudish because I'm the type of girl you can marry someday. Bonnie's just a cheap toy you're going to use a few times and then dump in the trash. But I'm only 16. I don't want a serious relationship in any way. Bonnie's more fun than you. Oh, you really think that? I ran to our camp and used scissors to turn my jeans into hot pants and my t-shirt into a crop top. Then I went back and said, how do I look now? Wow, you look hot. Really? You like the way I look? Because I need your validation to feel good about myself. Can you please make out with me? Please? It was fun beating Bonnie at her own game, but she was a professional and outplayed me. Mind if I join you two? Sorry, but I can't risk getting an STD from you. Okay, girls, calm down. Why don't we go back to my cabin for a duel to see which one of you is the better kisser? That's when I finally realized that my boyfriend didn't care about me one bit. I told him, it's over between us. I'm sure she already gave you her STDs, and I hope you both die of syphilis. But the rest of the trip, TJ was completely under Bonnie's spell, and she kept flaunting it in my face. Oh, babe, last night was so good. Can we go back to your bed? I rallied the other girls, and we ambushed them that night. 
First, we locked TJ into the bathroom. Then we tied Bonnie to a tree and taped her mouth shut. The girls held her still while I wrote man-eater across her forehead. It was fun until our teacher found out about it. She screamed, All you girls are suspended from school for two weeks. No, please don't suspend us. If Bonnie's the only girl left in our class, she will steal all our boyfriends. Bonnie didn't even try to wash off her man-eater tattoo. The guys thought it was funny, and she wore it like a badge of honor. Currently, I'm still suspended, but I've heard rumors that Bonnie makes out with up to five guys each break. I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. My big sister Susan is a scumbag. Growing up, she kept telling me I would never make friends because of my big nose. She said people were afraid of it. That's why I had such low self-esteem as a kid. For example, one time at summer camp, one of the popular girls threw her chocolate milk on me just for fun. I could have fought back and spit it in her face, but instead I just took it like a loser. Afterward, I tried hiding from them, and that's when this guy Jacob approached me. I hate this camp. It's so boring. Yeah, I know. You should have brought your girlfriend with you. Oh, I don't have one. My parents only allow me to date Jewish girls. Problem is that I don't know any. In that moment, I wished so bad I was Jewish. Jacob was cute, and we quickly became inseparable. I tried everything to make him fall in love with me. But then, it was already our last day of summer camp, and we still hadn't even kissed. I realized I had less than 24 hours left to seduce him. So I took him to a river and said, let's go swimming. But I don't have swim shorts. Underwear's the same thing, or if you want, you can go naked. We stripped down and jumped into the cold water. There, I put my arms around his neck and said, Warm me with your body, please. But he stopped me. No, I told you, we can't be together. You aren't Jewish. And what if I love you? That wouldn't change anything. I wanted to cry. I knew Jacob and I were meant for each other. He just didn't see it. So on our way back to camp, I pretended to hurt my ankle. Now he had to carry me in his arms while my body pressed against him. I knew he liked it. And when he sat down to rest, I pounced on him. He tried to fend me off, but I got in a few kisses and said, Promise you'll call me when you get home, so I can come visit you. It'll be perfect. He didn't respond, but I wouldn't give up. After everyone was asleep, I snuck into his dormitory and snuggled myself against him. Jacob, I wanted to thank you. You are the only person that's ever been nice to me. Can I give you a kiss? He didn't say no, so I went on top of him and made out. It was the best night of my life. But the next morning, it was time to say goodbye. I will always love you. Please remember me. I wrote my number on the back of his hand. But would he actually call me? Yes, he did. And it got better. Each school break, he invited me to visit him. He booked a hotel room for us so his parents wouldn't find out. We stayed in there from morning until evening. Our long distance relationship continued through high school and we had planned to go to UCLA afterwards so we could live together. But then came the bad news. I can't believe it, but I got into Princeton University. Wow, I didn't know you applied there. I tried to hide my feelings and said, that's great, I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry, I can't turn it down. It's the chance of a lifetime. Please forgive me. No, I understand. I love you and I want the best for you. But there's one more thing. I'm young and this long distance thing is killing me. It's best if we break up. I hung up. How could he do this to me? I had waited years for him, and now he dumped me over the phone? I was really angry and decided to get a rebound guy. As soon as I got to UCLA, I set my sights on Derek. He was smarter and better looking than Jacob. He could have gotten any girl he wanted if he wasn't so shy. So I accidentally bumped into him. Oh no, I'm sorry about that. Don't worry. No, it was my fault. Can I make it up to you and invite you over for dinner tonight? Haha, <laughs> sure. Sounds good. I ordered pizza to my dorm and dressed as sexy as I could. He couldn't take his eyes off of me. Hey, here's my face, you little perv. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was joking. I like it. You see, you are so hot, you could do whatever you want with me. Oh, girl. We went straight to my bunk bed and made out. Meanwhile, my roommates threw stuff at us, telling us to be quiet, but we just ignored them. It was all a mistake, though. I should have waited for a second or third date, because afterward, Derek only saw me as a plaything. Hey, are you free tonight? Yes, and I really want to watch the new Ryan Gosling movie. Nah, let's skip that and go straight to your bed. Ouch. He thought I was an easy girl he could have fun with any time he wanted. 
He didn't see me as girlfriend material at all. But maybe that wasn't so bad. Now I knew we would never become a couple, so why not exploit the situation? I took him shopping and said, Oh, I love this dress. Can you buy it for me? Oh, I didn't know I was paying, but okay. I was shameless, for sure, but so was he. When we stopped for a coffee drink at Starbucks, he said, Let's make out in the bathroom. Ew, it's dirty in there. Don't worry, he'll be careful. It was actually kind of fun, especially because someone kept knocking on the door. Please hurry in there. I can't wait much longer. And after 30 minutes, a Starbucks employee showed up. Come out now or I'll be forced to unlock the door. She didn't care and continued until they came in. It was... I was always known as the quiet girl, but one day I wore a short summer dress to school and I became the target of the mean girls. Yikes, Laura. What are you wearing today? <laughs> this isn't a nightclub. Yes, and you don't have the figure for it. Burn it. Or give it to me. I felt like an idiot. <laughs> so the next day I wore regular clothes again. But it didn't matter because the mean girls continued to tease me. Sana was the worst of them and said, Poor you. How does it feel to be 16 years old and still not have a boyfriend? I know it's not your fault that guys don't find you attractive, but it's still sad, isn't it? And it got worse. In Spanish, we had to describe one of our classmates and Sana chose me. She said, No tiene estilo. No tiene amigos. Y nunca va a encontrar un novio. I didn't understand a word, but everyone died laughing. I felt like such a loser. But then I got a call. It was Josh, my best friend from primary school. Josh had moved away in third grade to become a Disney child actor. Now he was a singer and a B-list celebrity. I told him, wow, I can't believe you remember me. Are you kidding? I still see you as my best friend. Really? You want to be friends with me? What? Of course. But you sound kind of depressed. Let me pick you up from school tomorrow. I knew this wasn't a date because Josh was clearly out of my league. But I still had a crush on him. And he actually came into my class yelling, Sorry for the interruption. I'm just looking for my bestie Laura. There she is. All the girls freaked out. They had never seen a celebrity before and they were all crushing on him. Meanwhile, I think Josh wanted to make me feel special. He picked me up in his arms and carried me out of the classroom. It was crazy. The next day in school, everyone was talking about it. Even Sana. She said, You're so lucky, Laura. How do you know him? He's my best friend. What's the big deal? Wow. Can you get me on a date with him? Sure, but why would I? Oh, come on. A pretty please. Ugh, no. You're gonna have to do a lot better than that. Fine. Tell me what you want and I'll do it. Oh, I had my ideas. First, I took her to the cafeteria, put my feet on her lap, and said, Give me a foot massage, you slave. You must be kidding. Nope, start rubbing. Or no date with Josh. God. Okay. People were laughing when they saw Sana being my servant. But afterward, I called Josh on WhatsApp and said, Hey, my classmate wants to know if you would consider going on a date with her. Of course he was in on my plan. Beforehand, I had instructed him to act like Sana was the girl of his dreams.